Beep, 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 Hello, good peepods of the interwebs, right? Mm. Now, I know I was a bit serious yesterday. You know, sometimes you have to be serious, and this is serious, really, this next one, but it's not serious in the same way. This is what this, the multitude of levels upon which this nonsense continues to pervade our society is quite extraordinary in itself when you sit and pause and think about it for a few minutes and... But I thought that we ought to do this one because it's a distinctly American story um, of gullibility. Um, and it makes for an interesting read. Uh, it, it wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't for the fact that the individual that we're going to be discussing has been lauded as some kind of messianic figure of the gender identity ideology movement, uh, as if their existence proves something, which it doesn't. Uh, so I'm talking about the rather lovely and fragrant Leah Thomas. Leah Thomas is a male of some gargantuan stature, I believe, a great tall bloke, who has inveigled his way into women's, uh, not paddling, swimming, right, into women's swimming. I'm not a sporty person. You might be able to tell that from my rather fat demeanor, okay? I don't exercise is like the devil, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> the less we move, the better we are. <laughs> right, okay, now that's just me, because I'm a lazy old fat git, right? And because, you know, sports was a horrible place for me. And the scars don't heal quick, right? So, this is a thread that's come up on Twitter, put up by someone called Jake Crane, and it caught my eye. And I thought it was worthwhile drawing everybody's attention to, um, as what usually happens seems to have happened again, right? It's every time somebody raises their head over the parapet and starts screaming about the fact that they're a wonderful individual and a member of the so-called trans community, it turns out that there's usually a darker story to be told. And I'm not one, generally, for shaming people, but it put me in mind, very strongly in mind, of a group of gay people, who gays and lesbians years ago, who used to out people who were in the closet. And I remember some people were like, that's a terrible thing to do when somebody comes out of their closet. It should be their choice, not anybody else's. And I agree with that. I think if you're somebody who's going to have to deal with their own sexuality, then you should be left alone to do so, no matter how long it takes. Although, if you're a friend of that individual, gentle prods are certainly an acceptable form of friendship. This particular individual that I was thinking of back then is someone who we're not particularly fond of now, but he was part of it. And I'm not going to say his name, right? Okay, but he was part of it. And it was a good thing. So they out people. But the people that they were out in were predominantly politicians who were actively involved in persecutions of gay people using the law, despite the fact that they were shagging every bloke they could get their hands on in private. Now, let's just state for the record, that's hugely different from somebody who is protective of their sexual orientation for a number of either inner or outer personal reasons, but is not in any way advocating the persecution of the very people that they actually are a group part of, right? So, you know... Right, these gays. Now, I can understand why they do this, mind. You bet I understand it. Young people years ago, when I was younger, if you were gay, you'd be the most vociferous haters of anything to do with gay because you were projecting. You were projecting what was what you felt was your your weakness or illness onto others. So I understand why it happens. I don't understand why it happens so much these days. You know, because I have to tell you, at a young age, which I was very young. Um, and I knew what right was and what wrong was from 11, easily, from 11, easily, long before then. Um, I didn't know what I was, to a certain degree. Well, I knew what I was, but didn't have a word for it, didn't have a name for it, didn't have know what it was, didn't know what I was in terms of a definition that was societally understood. Um, but I certainly found out when I did my first week at secondary school because everybody else knew. That's how it used to work. And I remember with absolute horror the realisation that I'd been born a criminal. That was something I, could, I found very difficult to cope with, but I'm, that doesn't happen now, thank God, you know. So, uh, you know, if you pick people, people who, who, who put their head above the parapet, who really ought to be a bit more careful, are, are in my book, fair game. So you sit around, you watch them come screaming out of the closet, oh, hey, because you saw Sam Smith the other day in the black outfit, dressed as Fart Vader, right? <laughs> you just think to yourself, keep going, Sam, there's something somewhere and somebody's going to find it. 
So this is no problem for me that Leah Thomas should become someone that has been taken on by here by Jake Crane. Um, and, and it says, this is a thread we never expected to write. We sat down with a woman swimmer called Riley Gaines. And I've seen Riley speak on this subject. <coughs> and um, yeah, it's been horrific. And I think there's lawsuits impending. Sorry, lawsuits pending. So they've done some digging. And now we have lots of questions. Is this what the NCA thinks is a woman? Warning, what we found is jarring. There's something funny about that, but you won't know till the end. Leah Thomas appears to have two Instagram accounts. It's just so predictable. <laughs> His public account, Leah K. Thomas, featuring a small handful of generic photos promoting messages like, let trans kids play. Yeah, you monster. Then a private account, Leah... Timus, T-H-I-M-A-S. They see they can't help themselves. They've got to get out there in public. Part of the affirmation. Part of the affirmation. So there's a number of pictures. I'll put the tweet in. The Dubris, as you know, a number of pictures of Leah, Leah Thomas there with all these sort of fine pictures of him looking stressed at the, at, the, at the starting line of a swimming race and all the usual stuff you'd expect when somebody's portraying their image as a, as a, as a, a, a swimmer of some repute. And then there's got another. Then they've got a picture of Leah Thomas, as in Leah Timmis. Um, this account is private. Wonder why. Anyway, so they carried on researching, and we found the observant uh, at where's where's w a w r o, who identified multiple Instagram posts about autogynephilia. Ho, 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 my autogynephiliac, right? <laughs> oh, 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 me autogynephile. <laughs> Just uh, by the kinks. <laughs> hey, 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 me autogynephile. <laughs> Stop it. Right, okay. For those of you who don't know, AGP autogynephilia is a male's propensity to be sexually aroused by the thought of himself as female, which can include things like getting a boner when you... Touch a bra in m &S. That's your thing, that's your thing. Just keep it out in the public bloody square. And stop pretending you're something you're not. That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it, eh? So they found these, and they put them up for you to have a look at. It's all this sort of twee, AGP trans stuff, you know? And pictures of Lolita-like creatures. It's the usual stuff that anybody who's been in this in this particular troublesome arena for long enough will know exactly what it is that you'll be looking at, for those of you that don't. It's jarring, okay? So you've been warned. Um, perhaps, perhaps most troubling, however, they continue to say, um, Leah self-admits that they're AGP um, through the form by, of doing sort of repeated likes, um, a res, a, a repeated likes of a sexual response in biological males characterised by sexual arousal, arousal of the idea of being or becoming female. Um, there was a topology that was put together <coughs> by... Um, uh, an individual what was his name Ray I think it was Ray Ray Blanchard Ray Blanchard's topology is something that's been informed by over 30 years of practice in the field I'm not condemning these people in any way we should shame them if they do it in public but I'm not condemning them as individuals you understand keep it in your bedroom What's wrong with you? Keep it in your bedroom, same as the rest of them. Just keep it in your bloody bedroom. Wander around, do it in public. And then it's said here that Ray Blanchard talks about the different topologies and what the behaviours of AGP men are. And it is the fact that they are they have an autoerotic location error. So when they look in the mirror, they don't they want to see themselves as a woman. Um, but that 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 woman that they see may well be a, a highly um, uh, imaginative uh, idea of a woman, you know, an extreme femininity of long nails and hair and nick, sexy knickers. And all. It really is a pornified version of what a woman is. Or that they're unable to see the fact that they don't look like a woman at all. So rather like anorexia, they look in the mirror, anorexic, anorexic, some, some anorexics will see somebody who's larger than they are. When the autogynophile looks in the mirror and sees them dressed as a woman, they see someone who is rather more beautiful than they actually are which is my gender gender bending friend tells me is why so many of them look like a bag of spanners right it's cruel isn't it so 
He's also liked other things by other people that we know, like Fallon Fox, who was who was a vile bloke. This is all stuff that he's doing that is indicative of a psychopathology, which is not quite so simple as isn't Leo, Leo Thomas wonderful because uh, he can swim and pretend he's a woman at the same time. I'm going to include the links, right? Because it then gets into some very strange territory indeed, involving a number of people and what looks like and what is known as a polycule, right? A polycule, right? Not a molecule, but a polycule, right? Which is, you know, three people that shag each other. And there's pictures of people in extremely strange clothing and extremely strange sexual poses, all obviously finding it incredibly erotic that they're getting to wear women's clothes. Gosh, how vulnerable. And it then ends, and at the point I will end, because I'm not taking you through this. <laughs> You'll have to go and have a look yourself. So it ends when I take you to the point where it ends. Um, and they then call themselves were called by somebody called Crybaby Hellbitch, uh, Ballless Beauties, which was accompanied by a picture of Leah Thomas lying on the bed, having been made a eunuch in the false belief that it would do something to make them more like a female, which it doesn't, of course. What it actually does is make them more like a male. It's just a male that can't function. So then they said they're a polycule, and then they've got a picture of somebody carrying a mysterious round-shaped organ-looking item in a clear jar so yes folks this was jarring and what it looks like is uh, it was uh, a, a jarring of leah's bollocks good word there for the americans canadians bollocks a jarring of uh, uh, of leah's bollocks which looks like they keep on the on the on the mantelpiece in the front room yeah not a cult not a fetish <laughs> <laughs> these people have fun. <laughs> I hope you aren't having your breakfast when you did this one. See you later.